What's up, YouTube? My name is Jason, and this is my tape. And I'm back. Hope you guys had a good weekend. And today we're going to kick it off with the review of the new Drake album. Honestly, never mind. And honestly, I, I wasn't expecting a Drake album this short <laughs> of a period of time. Uh, nine months has been. Uh, nine months of pregnancy, I guess. And <laughs> by that, I'm referring to Drake's last album from 2021, Certified Lover Boy. And as a big Drake fan, I, I would say this is probably one of his more mediocre records to date. Another Drake album as of late, but honestly, there, there are quite a few tracks I still return to from that record. So what I was expecting was maybe, you know, a good two years or so, one and a half, two years or so before Drake pops up again with another project. But no, no, we, we, we have this new album over here, Honestly Never Mind, which is a dance record, a, a genre shift for Drake, which um, was interesting to see. Um, I, I feel like Drake is, is one who doesn't take many risks, and that, that is something that um, I would want him to do, more so rap-wise, but you know, him being a good singer and all that, I, I was kind of curious to see uh, what will be happening over here on this record. And after nine months of, of, of pregnancy and, and carrying th this new album, inside of him. Drake popped out his worst album to date. And I, I didn't think that I would ever say that. Like, like I didn't, I thought that that was kind of in the past, but um, nah, this this didn't do it for me. I'm not even going to hold y'all. Now, my, my biggest issues with this record aren't necessarily the sound of it. I think that the production is honestly the best part of it. It's more so Drake and kind of his performances. Uh, how he sounds over more dancey house type of music. Um, it, it, it didn't all come together. Um, there, were, there were some really good moments on here that I wish consistently happened across the entire project. Um, but th th this really did have me wondering here. I, I, I see, I saw that 40 produced some records. I, I haven't looked deeply into it, but you know, I really would have thought Drake would have kind of pulled from you know heavy hitters in this genre. Um, I, I wonder you know, if, if K Trinata what was on his mind that would have been like a great name for this because honestly th this just felt like a like a a nice attempt like a nice try at this sound um and, and it didn't really sound like it was a lot of time put into this but luckily we got we got some some good things out of this so let's just start with that first being the song a keeper uh drake <laughs> this this song kind of made me laugh in terms of what drake was saying about why would i keep you around and kind of speaking about an ex and you know we hear drake kind of tell these stories of ex-girlfriends and different things, more so in the light of, of him missing them or wanting them back or not wanting them to be with other people. But th this time he's like, nah, you you can bounce. And I actually love the bounce of this track. Like, like it feels really good. And I, and I think that this is one of the better tracks in terms of how Drake flowed and sounded over it. A track that's really grown on me is the song Sticky, where Drake talks about different sticky situations that he's been in, whether it's with you know people in the industry or women and how he just likes to have a lot of people around him, security or different things. You know, he's talking about not doing plus ones, like like I, I gotta bring the whole squad with me. I really enjoyed the variations in the 808s on here. Also really love the stuttering effect on the sample. Best produced track by far, in my opinion, is the song Massive. Um, and, and honestly, it is the main reason I enjoy this track. I mean, Drake isn't even on the song as much. I know for a fact when this song is played in clubs, like everybody's gonna like, be jumping and bouncing to it like like it's one of them ones i honestly wish there were more moments like this on the album a final highlight for me is the song jimmy cooks because listen like uh 21 savage and drake don't really miss in my opinion um i love when they come together they always make good music but at the same time i i, I am wondering why why was why was this song on here this is a, a trap song like like it, it's not a dance record like this could have been on clb this could have been really on any other Drake project. So it, it, it kind of was a head scratcher. Like, I, I, I don't know, it just it just felt weird. And that's, that's highlights, you know, that, like I said, like this, <laughs> this, was, this, was, this wasn't a good album for me. Uh, I mean, I honestly don't even like the other tracks, but let, let's just touch on a few that, that kind of stuck out to me. First being the song Falling Back, um, Drake Drake usually um, is the king of intros. He never disappoints and <sighs> his streak has ended now overall it's not like it's not so awful but it's just like drake himself like this track shouldn't have been as long as it was 
like the last two and a half, three minutes, it's just Drake repeating, falling back on me. Um, no switch up, no variation in that. And why, why are we still here? Currents was probably the most annoying track on the project. Uh, there's bed squeaking throughout the entire track. And that was not fun at all. Also, Drake brought out just a whole new like singing voice. Like, it was, I don't know what this was, but I, and we hear it on a, a few other tracks on here, but I, you can sing, bro. But don't, don't, I don't know what this was. Flight's Booked was an odd track here. The sample was really throwing me off because it was like off beat, like some of the chops. And when the drums came in, I thought, okay, maybe it fits with the drums and no, it, it doesn't. But I think sound wise, like this this track had a lot of potential. Um, it would have been nice to throw in some more some more instruments here rather than just the kick, like some some hi hats, some claps, something. It, it would have gave this track a little more flavor. Also, there's a track Overdrive, and and honestly, it, it felt like a like a weekend like Dawn FM attempt. Um, the weekend would have done a lot better with this track. Also, like the kick in the beginning of this track is like very much doesn't have a lot of thump to it. And it sounds like it's like clipping and it sounds like weird. Like my ears just keep picking it up and it like annoys me. But look, man, I don't, the other tracks I mentioned, I, I, they're, I, I'm not really rocking with them. Um, so we can get in the video here a little, like I'm, I'm like, this doesn't really change like my, how I feel as a fan of Drake, but like, I just feel like I haven't been wowed by him since 2015, since if you're reading this and like, like, I'm just wondering when, when the day will come where Drake just comes with something that'll really just blow me away, like like he has in the past. He's gonna dabble in other genres. I think that's great. I just hope that he gives it the right amount of time and care that it deserves. Yeah, man. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm always gonna be looking forward to what the man drops, but this just, it, I mean, we can end it here. I'm gonna give this album a three out of 10. So what you guys think of this new Drake album? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What were your favorite tracks? Let's have a discussion down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. Got a Logic review coming tomorrow. Please like and subscribe to the channel. I'm Jason. This has been my take. And I'll see you next time.